Earlier this year, rugby Super League side Salford Red Devils announced plans to become the first professional rugby league club wholly owned by its community, writing history and beginning a new era at the AJ Bell Stadium. Join us as we explore the careers of those that make the fans' dreams come true. To succeed on the pitch, the club must also succeed off the pitch. We sat down with the club's chief commercial officer and former professional rugby player Chris Irwin to discuss his career both as a professional player and as a commercial officer. My career started as a rugby league player. I retired in 2006 um, as a qualified as a teacher at that stage. Um, from there I set my own companies up, uh, one in sports coaching which are franchise and I had an independent specialist schools which um, engage with uh, students and pupils that fell out of the educational system and they'd be housed at one of the, my specialist centres. Uh, I sold my businesses in 2021 and made the decision that I wanted to go back into pro sport. I wasn't sure whether I wanted to go in the coaching side or the exec side, um, I took on a role at the club as head of youth, so I, uh, I set the pathways up again from under 15s, under 18s through to the reserves. Uh, at the same time as that, I did a programme uh, with a company called VSI for CEO of sports organisations. Um, and within that, I, that was the point I decided that I wanted to go into an executive role within the sport club. A um, couple of job opportunities came across, came up for me. Uh, and Paul King, the uh, MD, pulled me to one side and said, there's an opportunity here for Chief Commercial Officer. Would I be interested? And uh, here I find myself in that role now. Back when I was playing rugby, uh, the best part of being a professional rugby player was obviously game day, uh, playing in front of crowds, uh, feeling the excitement, the buzz and the rush of, uh, uh, of playing a game in front of a, a, a packed house. Nothing can beat that, um, and I think every player that stopped playing uh, always misses that. The worst thing is probably the dedication, the um, inability, not the inability, but not being able to go out with your mates, um, the discipline that you need to have with your meals, uh, and especially back in the day when I was playing, um, missing out on those nights out with your pals when uh, you've got a game coming up in the, in the next couple of days. So that was the worst thing, but uh, yeah. Uh, the best thing is going to training and just uh, having a bit of a laugh with the mates. That's the best thing. Uh, the worst thing, oh, for me personally, injuries. Yeah, that just comes from the sports of us. That's the worst thing. Uh, best thing is going to work with your mates every day and doing something that I've loved since I was a kid. Uh, worst bit. How you feel after a game when you wake up, probably, for me. Uh, best thing about being a pro rugby player, probably, you know, every day you're getting to go out and play with your mates on the field, you know, have fun, uh, you know, relaxed atmosphere, and best job in the world, really. Just like many professional athletes, careers are short lived. The transition from player to desk was something Chris Irwin was ready for. So um, the transition from being a player to, to going into my teaching, it was quite a simple one for me really. I'd, I think I'd made that decision in my head um, that I was going to make that transition. Um, when I was assigned for Swinton, I started um, the teacher training course at the time, um, which was over two years. I think it made the decision easier that I broke my jaw twice in those two years. Um, so as soon as I completed my teacher training, um, that was me done and trans transitioned straight into work in education. For many Salford fans, the dream either is or was to pull on the Red Devils shirt 
and play for their club at the AJ Bell Stadium. But just like any career, reaching the levels you aspire to requires hard work and pure dedication. We need like so to be a pro player, you'd like you'd have to have you have to muscle, hard work, and dedication, and just you obviously need strength, and you need to like don't just. If you could, don't back out and just go into it, go into a tackle and obviously communicate. It'll be very cool to go like, it's going to be cool to like go back in the changing rooms and stuff like that to meet other local players. So we can to like join the club and they get a big over. So it'll be really cool. Along with hard work and dedication, the role of a professional rugby player sees you responsible for thousands of people's emotions on a weekly basis. And with the invention of social media and the press hot onto everything you say, there's nowhere to hide. How do I handle the pressure of the fans, followers and TV? Um, I'm, I just generally just try and just stay away from it really, don't don't look into it too much. Uh, same with the game, whether we win or uh, lose, just uh, just try and keep a tame, relaxed mood all the way and just go with it. Not, not something you really think about when you're on the field, you can't really hear much because uh, you're that tired and then off the field, uh, it doesn't bother me too much, I kind of keep myself to myself a bit. So. The challenge doesn't end on the pitch. We spoke to Red Devils managing director Paul King about his career before Salford, personal health issues and his ongoing work to strengthen Salford as a club and as a community. Uh, very strange, so I had uh, 30 odd years in the security industry and uh, senior exec roles. Um, it was 2017 I came out of a, a cancer op. I said I was going to take a step back for uh, a day or two or a year or two and just uh, do something different with my life, get out of the rat race a little bit. Uh, so I opened up my own security consultancy. About two months into that, I got a phone call asking if I could help uh, with the club. Um, and it's just been a fashion since 1973, the club. Been, uh, I've been a fan since then, so uh, I came in to help. I thought it was going to be like a couple of months of a gig, uh, and it turns out I'm fucking here now. So yeah, after about six months I became the sole director of the, the club. I was still under the holding company. Oh yeah, sole director. So I don't know what happened if I'm being honest. I just, um, I went to a meeting and next thing you know, here I am. Uh, best part of the role is that I'm a fan. Uh, so I love watching the games. I love days like today when we've got all these old legends. Paul Charlton's there, who's my absolute legend since I was a kid in 73, um, all those old boys are around, uh, even the new guys hanging around with, um, with professional athletes, seeing the way that they operate, seeing the way they behave, their, their attitude. Um, and it's, I've just been a fan since 73, so we wouldn't want to work in this environment, to be honest, as a fan. The biggest challenge is always cash flow. We, we, you know, we're not a cash-rich club. I'm not very fancy. We don't have. We're a community uh, club, so we, we operate within within the bounds of a particular budget, which tends to be a bit lower than everybody else's. We're working on that now. We're really trying to uh, increase income streams. We're working really hard to do that. It's probably the most difficult bit. Um, that and I think the advent of social media which, um, gives everybody an opinion. I want to quote Ricky Gervais: "You can have your own opinion. You can have your own facts." Yeah, um, dealing with that's often difficult. People expect you to respond to every rumour and, and etc. You just can't, you can't get oxygen. So ignoring that, but not as I've scanned. Uh, um, Salford, the future's right. I think the future is um, probably. As we, as we move forward over the next 12, 18 months, well, because of the community ownership model, we'll expose ourselves to um, lots and lots of different funding pots that we can grab. We're in negotiation and conversation with uh, South Council now about a rugby league strategy, which will be an annual thing. 
um, which will be really good for us. Um, involve re-delivery at school levels, development offices. Quite impactful in terms of both reach and financially. So I, th I think given about 18 months, uh, the future can be really, really bright. The pathway will be uh, 18 months further down the line, or more investment in it. Um, the future myself, um, I don't know, be nice. I'm 58, doesn't go on forever. Um, I will think about that. Maybe. I'll see this season out and then we'll see what happens. For many sports fans, club ownership can be a touchy subject. Becoming community owned was a huge step for Salford's future, and the support was there from day one, with supporters and staff feeling closer together than ever before. I uh, love it. Uh, there's only been big changes and stuff. They've got the corporate days to do now and uh, other things. Plus, every single person who's an owner now is a salesman. So uh, I reckon by next year, things are going to uh, build up and the fan base is going to go bigger. Um, and obviously, with a new Super League model, uh, I think we're going to fit into that perfectly. Yeah, he said, well, we three generations. So my dad goes, uh, myself and my daughter. We've been going, well, I've been going since a kid. Um, and it's just a good family experience. Um, everyone loves it, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. What's your thoughts on the, obviously being the first Super League club to be fan owned? Yeah, it's good. It's interesting. We'll just see how that develops over the time, and um, hopefully, it could be the blueprint for other clubs to yeah. follow. You boys, ex-players? Only amateurs. Yeah. Yeah. Long time ago. Did you miss it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't think my legs do. My knees <laughs> don't. <laughs> How how do you find the relationship between the ladies team and the men's team here at Salford? It's really good, it's really to be good. Fair. I've been to all the clubs before and we don't share social media, yeah. we don't respect in the same way. Whereas even like Ryan comes out and helps coach one time, like yeah. I, I, I yeah. like yeah. it's nice. Yeah. So had the teams involved as well, yeah. which is nice. Yeah. 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 What's the future for the Salford ladies in this season, next season? Get demoted back into the league below and <laughs> or promoted into the league of all. So Super League's been split now, so it was originally Super League 1, Super League 2. Unless we finish first or we win playoffs, we're back to get the boat again. There's only two people staying in Super League now from our league, so... Um, we've got some tough competition ahead of us, haven't we? Yeah, but we've got a good chance. We've got a few chance, haven't we? If we play like we did today. I didn't do it. No, I didn't do it, no. Um, I know quite a few people who did. They're all glad about it, but yeah. we'll see how that goes in the future, won't we? You know, not just not just this season, let's see how it goes in the future. Good. It's a long-term thing. Yeah. It's for Salford anyway, as long as we stay here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Without a multi-millionaire owner, Salford's self-funded approach must be successful for the club's future, with every revenue opportunity playing a crucial role. So my role as Chief Commercial Officer at the club Ultimately, is to um, increase revenue, and that's through ticket sales, that's through digitally, that's through selling of sponsorship and partnership packages. Uh, anything that brings in revenue, that fall, falls under me, um, and that's you know, and, and part of that was to working with a marketing department, making sure that they're driving um, the, the work that they do and driving the, and getting the brand out there and making sure uh, kids uh, and the exposure of the clubs out there for people to come into the club. Um, and then it's to work with all the sponsors, ensure that we've got Platinum Dining above us there. That's full on game day. The boxes are full on game day. Anything that related to revenue is linked to my role as Chief Commercial Officer. Getting a career in the executive side of professional sport isn't easy, but it's by no means impossible. So I guess any advice for people that want to come into the, that professional sports arena in the, in the background area in terms of the corporate side, um, is getting, on, getting at the club. You need to you know, network, you need to volunteer, put yourself out there, um, get yourselves on relevant courses. There's, 
number of universities car sports and business is a big one but there's lots of other uh, degree courses there's companies out there that like I did, I went on, on and, and took myself out to upskill myself uh, by doing the CEO course that I did for a year. Um, so it's just putting yourself out there, uh, understand the role that you're going into um, and just get in amongst that club in any capacity you can. And that could be volunteering um, or working part time, but just get in amongst it and understand it. So next steps for us as a team, what is it you think we, we need to keep doing? Is it just keep sticking at it? Yeah, definitely. I thought we definitely took a step in the right direction today. Um, and it, I feel like it, it, it's almost there. We are on the brink. So, I mean, we get that result. This t The table's turned for us and we're flying. We know we're almost there. We know we're just there. So, we know once it clicks, things will start rolling really good for us. So, um, yeah, the boys will take this week to, to freshen up mentally and get back to the training paddock next week. And, um, yeah, things will click for us. And when they do, they'll be exciting. Salford really is a family club with a very special bond between fans and staff. That special bond serves as additional motivation, motivation to drive the Red Devils to where they belong.